So this is my Reolink RLC 822A and now I'm able to optically zoom in. So you can adjust the field of view of your camera so that you will be able to digitally zoom in and be able to read this. Hello guys, Lifehackster here. Today, I'll be replacing my Reolink IPNVR camera, the 12 megapixel. I think this is the RLC 1220A to their new RLC 822A. And the main difference, this is still a 4K resolution camera, but the main difference is that it has three times optical zoom. But before that, if you find this video and my other videos helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. And click the bell notification so as to get notified when I upload product reviews and updates like this video, product comparisons, and long-term reviews. Thank you. Now, a lot of security cameras, especially Wi-Fi cameras, advertises that it has a 4, 8, 16 times zoom. Or mostly they will say digital zoom. When they say digital, I don't think it can be considered as an important feature. It is mostly the app will magnify and zoom in, like when you pinch out the view of the camera from your phone. It will just zoom in to a blurred and pixelated footage. And even if the app doesn't have this feature, you can always use a photo or video editing software to digitally zoom in. And this is what I mostly do when I zoom in a snapshot in my review videos. But when you say optical zoom, there's another glass or set of lens in the camera that is like a telescope or like the zoom lens in your video camera that will optically magnify the field of view without losing the clarity of the footage. And the RLC 822A can zoom in up to three times. By the way, thank you Reelink for sending this to me to check out. The downside though of optically zooming in is that the field of view of the camera also narrows down. So you have to balance how much you can zoom in without sacrificing too much what the camera sees. With my 12 megapixel Reolink 1220A, one main issue I have, and I think might be with my Apple iPhone, is that I'm not able to save the footage from the NVR to my phone. So I have to change the resolution of this camera from the default 4096 by 3072 to the regular 3840 by 2160 resolution. And only then I can download the footage. And also the field of view of the 1220 is a bit narrower, 67 degrees horizontal and 41 degrees vertical. And even with a narrow field of view, reading license plate is not that great on moving cars. So we will check out the new RLC 822A and see if this camera is a better option in my setup. Let's check out its features. So this model has the person and vehicle detection, which by the way, if you haven't seen my review video when Reolink started selling their smart AI cameras, I will link them down below so that you can check them out. And it does have three times optical zoom. As to resolution, it is an eight megapixel camera with 3840 by 2160 pixel resolution at 25 frames per second. Field of view is dynamic because of the zoom, 9450 degrees horizontal and 53 to 30 degrees vertical. Opening the box, you will see the mounting template, window decal, and a quick start guide. And we have a short ethernet cable, which I'm not sure why Reolink keeps including this, because you're not going to and will not be able to use this. It is too short. Then we have the camera itself, a turret type, and looks exactly the same like the 820A and the 1220A. So we have the camera lens, light sensor, mic, and infrared LEDs in the front. It has the usual connections, Ethernet or for PoE, a 12 volt power supply if not connected via NVR, and a reset switch. It also has a micro SD card slot if you want to record to a micro SD card, and you can use up to a 256 gigabyte card. In my setup though, it is recording 24-7 in my Reolink NVR. Comparing it to my 820A, you will see that the camera lens for the 822A is bigger, and it is because of the optical zoom, but everything else looks exactly the same. Time to swap this out with my older 1220A. This is going to be the easiest install for me because I just basically need to swap out the cameras. I don't even have to change the mount. It will use the same mount. So just unscrew the 1220A, unplug the ethernet cable from the NVR, and plug in the new one and slide it back in, and point the camera to the position you want. Now we have to change the settings in the NVR because all the channels in my NVR are used. It will not automatically be added. We need to change the settings and replace the assigned channel. So go to the settings, choose channel, click on the channel that is not connected, 
and there's a little camera icon that says replace. Click on it and scroll and choose the camera that is not assigned. Select it and click next and click OK. And now the new 822A will show on your NVR. So let's try out the zoom feature in the NVR. If you click on the bottom of the screen, you will see the camera settings and you will see the PTZ controls. You can zoom in and which it does automatically focus. There's a bit of a delay in focusing, but you can also manually change the focus if you want. Just to clarify about the optical zoom, the camera will not automatically zoom in when it detects motion. You can manually zoom in like during live view using the controls. And the main use for this is that you can set how much field of view you want the camera to have depending on your setup. In my case, I have to balance it so that I can still see the side of my truck and also I can still digitally zoom in on cars parked in front of the house and be able to read license plates. One thing I can tell you though is that another thing I noticed with my 1220A is that reading plates on moving cars is a bit difficult. But with the 822A, aside from actually having a bit wider field of view on the zoomed in setting that I ended up with, I can read the moving car's plates most of the time. At night too, it can also read plates way better than my 1220A, but this has something to do with the infrared glare and camera angle. It is all about positioning the camera to where you want to read the license plates, and I will make a separate video on this. Overall though, this is a pretty good camera and is a better option for me in my setup than the 1220A. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.